Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today we have something really special for you. This watch has only just been released today, and it is the new Oris Acris Pro 4000. Now, a few years ago, they released their first Pro version of this watch, and it had a very respectable 1,000 meters of water resistance. But since then, a few brands like uh, Rolex and Omega have released some incredibly deep going watches. Obviously Rolex did the Deep Sea Challenge and Amiga did the Planet Ocean uh, Ultra Deep. Now this is Oris's kind of response to these watches. Now they are big watches and this is too. This is a real beast. They've really gone to town on this so um, stay tuned. Let's find out more about it. But before I do, we've got to say a big thank you to Ryan and team over at Francis and Gay Commentary for allowing me to review this watch. They've got tons of stock, so many fantastic watches, as you can see from this piece. Uh, so if you're in the Midlands area, I strongly recommend you go in. If you're a little bit further afield, I'll leave a link to, the, in, to their website in the description below. So just check it out. This, oh, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's a real... Yeah, sort of like hockey puck of a watch. I love it. Now, let's talk sizes first. We are talking 48.5 mil, so about the same size as a Seiko tuner. Thickness-wise, get ready for it, 23.5 mil, or 23 mil, say. The lug-to-lug -lug size is 55 mil. Now, by way of comparison, the new Deep Sea from Rolex is 61 mil, and this sits kind of in between the kind of Rolex and the Omega. So anyway, oh, I should also point out the bandwidth on this is 26 mil, so a little bit like the uh, old Panerai's Radar Mirrors. So anyway, let's zoom in on that dial. The dial itself is very classy. It just looks great. You have a lovely wave pattern going across, uh, across there. You have applied markers all the way around. We have the date window down at the six o'clock position, so we keep a nice symmetry to the watch. You have the two extra uh, loom pips on top there, and you have this lovely baby blue second hand, lollipop style second hand on there. Now, all the hands, including the bezel, are fully loomed up and the loom is pretty pretty impressive on this because you have a buy loom on there i think the loom is very good on this watch it really does look the part so as you can see we've got a bit of depth to this dial because we've got the raised up um applied uh, markers and you have this chapter ring going around there i love even the polish of the hands it's got a nice polish on there and it looks like you've got a slight graduation as it comes out getting a little bit darker towards the outer sides of the bezel of the dial i should say overall i think they've done a really nice job on the dial it does look pretty pretty nice now we're looking through one heck of a thick crystal here look at that as the name would suggest we do have 4,000 meters so four kilometers of water resistance to this watch and so that crystal has to be incredibly thick now there's no data available at the moment to tell me how thick this is but you've got to be talking seven or eight mil um, and i love this chamfer they have on there it's so sharp so really nicely cut in there i think it looks fantastic so AR coating on both sides, I do believe. Now, as we come out, we have this bezel on there. This is a, it looks to appear to be anywhere, a ceramic bezel. We do have these safety screws here locking it down. I don't know exactly what they're for, but they are there and they do look pretty cool. Now this, to actually rotate this bezel, you have to use this. Now this is, as it says there, tested. You can't just turn the bezel, because if I do this, this safety system locks in position at the 12, 3, 6, and 9 position. So I'll move it around. It clicks in. But to actually move a bezel, it's a real process. I don't know if because it's new, but you have to pinch it and then turn it. So it is very, very positive. There is no way you are going to accidentally turn this bezel. We've got to try and get it around. You can see how much I'm pinching the, uh, the actual watch to turn it. Can I get it round? Because otherwise it will bug me if it's not at zero. So just hoping I don't go past because this is one hard bezel to turn. One more click. There. And that's it. So that's lined up. But yeah, this you can place it wherever you want. So yeah, you can lock it over there if you want. No problem at all. But this I should also point out is rubber. Um, so what that means is the likelihood is being that this watch is just so thick 
the chances are you might actually knock it on a door frame or whatever as you do. Now, if you were, hopefully the rubber on this will take the impact because it does stick out a lot further than the sides of a watch. So that's kind of a hopeful thing which might happen if you were to do that. So as we come past that, we have a satinized finish going on there. I should point out this watch is actually made of a composite titanium, I believe. So in though it looks heavy, um, don't get me wrong, it's no lightweight. This it comes in at 195 grams which is still less than my Seiko Marine Master 300 was on a bracelet, or my Zin here, the one, uh, 104, that comes in at 155 grams. So it's surprisingly not as heavy as what you think it would be. So, but as I say, as we could, you do have a helium, with, helium release valve on the side there. So this might be one of these watches where if you were a professional deep sea diver, that would actually be um, kind of handy but I think there's probably only about 200, 200 of them worldwide. But as I say, we come around, I still have the stickers on the lugs here because I don't want to remove them really. I love the big chunky crown and the crown guards here with their screws they use to place them on. Now, a little thing, as you can see, the crown is a full screw down crown as one would expect from a 4,000 meter diver. And it's a very positive click to it there. But this is interesting. Now, the actual crown diameter, it doesn't look that big on here, but it's 10 millimeters in diameter. Now, might not mean anything, but you've got some watches which are only 10 millimeters thick. So it gives you an idea of the sheer size and volume of this watch. It really is a beast. On the back, you have a full screw down crown. You can't see the movement on the back there. It does have a chart for feet and meter conversions. But behind there is their Caliber 400, which is a 21 joule movement. Uh, I did put it on the time grapher and it did fantastic. Zero beat rate, uh, zero, uh, 0.1 beat rate and zero deviation in the position I had it. But at first it wouldn't read the, the movement. Um, the way I normally place it in the microphone couldn't get past the thickness of the body to actually read it. So I had to place it in with the microphone directly on the crown so it would actually read it. But it really, it's a, uh, the movement is amazing. It comes with a 10 year guarantee. It comes with 10 year servicing schedules. And I'm trying to remember what other thing. It's got a twin barrel. So it obtain, uh, actually obtains five days worth of power when fully wound. But don't get me wrong, to fully manually wind this watch, you are talking about 100 turns of the crown to fully wind it. Obviously, if it's on your wrist, that isn't going to matter either way. It will just stay wound. But food for thought, that is. So as we come past this, we have this lovely rubber strap. Now, I say 26 mil up here, and it does taper down. So I think the Oris rubber straps are fantastic, and they have this superb clasp system here. Um, it's just a really nice system. You've got fully adjustable on the fly. You move these. If you press these in, as you can see, it clicks to the next one. So you can lock it in position and it is really, really nice system we have there. Obviously, if this watch doesn't fit you, you can then cut it and, you know, so you can size it exactly for what you need. So if I put this on my wrist, let's see how it looks. My, I say, quick zoom out, quick wrist check, the Zin 104, classic watch from Zin. And Mr. Bob, what are you wearing, mate? He has the Rock watch. Now, Rec, sorry, um, I really like this brand. They're a small brand from, is it Copenhagen? Denmark. We're in Denmark, and they make interesting watches based on parts from old cars or things like that. I think it really is superb. So let's put this on my wrist, and you'll get an idea how it looks. My wrist size is seven and a quarters. And there you go. It is a beast. There's no getting around it. But I kind of strangely like it. It's like it's kind of, uh, you know, I really shouldn't. But honestly, on the wrist, I think it looks absolutely superb. Um, would it be my daily watch? I don't know about that. But it is definitely a beast. So anyway. All right, then, guys. I'm going to leave you to it. And let me know in the comments below what you think of a watch. But most importantly, stay safe out there. All the best. Bye.